Hello, friends. Miss Tweety's parents, I hope, are listening. And I'm Miss Tweety, also known as Margaret Dahlberg. The podcast isn't about my parents. It's about the parents that I've been hanging out with over the last, gosh, almost 40 years as an educator of children in piano and then a little later along early childhood music. Uh, so I love talking about parenting and I love talking about life's challenges. So um, why don't we talk about both? My guest today is Rita. I got to know her when her son became my piano student and we hit it off right away, just chatting uh, before and after lessons, really. And um, I knew I wanted her on. I don't teach her son anymore, but um, it sure was fun to get to know her better. One thing you may notice is the sound quality. I don't know what was going on with my system. I had my good mic all set up. Everything looked like it was functioning normally, but ultimately I think it just used my laptop mic. So I can't figure that out. I'll be asking the experts about it, but that's why the sound quality is not what um, it usually is. Anyway, here is my chat with Rita. I mean, we haven't officially started yet, okay. although we can officially start. Hi, Rita. Thanks for joining <laughs> me today. Okay, so before we go any further, tell me about your family. How many children do you have and their ages? So I have, in my family, I've had three kids. So they are 14, 13, and 10. Wow. Okay, and the 14 and 13-year-old, how many months apart? They are 20. I okay. Think, so they're, they're only one year apart not numerically but they're almost two years months. apart yeah and and in grade school are they two grades yeah okay so it's a weird part i don't really remember the victoria's two and a half years okay and benjamin is your oldest yeah okay so benjamin franklin victoria, victoria. Yeah. cool the oldest one has just started had friends over to cook with sorry i know that's not fun but just we i didn't a... say this last time but they um I feel like because the boys are friends and maybe COVID, moving, whatever, we don't tend to have tons of their friends, per se, over. Yeah. Because I've kept my oldest son, which I might have met, mentioned last time, was really not ADHD, but very active as a kid. So since he was two and a half, I've had him in camps. Oh. Okay. So every day is an activity. I've been, so since he was three. What do you mean? You've had him in camps like during the summer? or Yeah. That's the way we handled his whatever. Activities. Now they say neurodiversity. Yeah. I don't really know. Like hyperactivity is a word that was used in the old days. In the old days, and she didn't, was she him. wasn't really like that. Because I remember yeah. those boys from school. I say boys because there was a lot of boys like that. And maybe there was girls too. Um, it's just he needed to be busy. Yeah. And we recognized that from a young age. So yeah. he's always there. So even now, to this day, 14 years later, every day he has an activity. Mm-hmm. And, and whether that's not I don't know if that was right maybe we'll find out your later well it must be you. working or you wouldn't yeah. be continuing to do it you know I mean the right and wrong label right I, I mean what would the experts say I I'm not know. sure they would probably say well you know the unschooling or sorry the un like the slowing down you shouldn't yeah. do too much there that was a couple of years ago that came out like you should be doing less with yeah. your kids yeah well that's yeah post COVID I know many families who adhere to the keep my child busy Mm. and they weren't necessarily um more active boys i knew a couple of families uh, with girls Mm. that when school would end those girls would be lost and Mm -hmm. the and the parents learned that's why to give them camps because they like to be on track and have goals and have and if you've got working parents or parents that have their own projects and things going on so I don't know I mean experts experts schmexperts I'm kind of like I think you're an expert in your own family I think we all are and and what's working for our family obviously it's working 14 years later he's a happy kid he's not complaining I'm doing too much and too like I, I have had parents as friends and not necessarily friends ask me has he ever said I'm too busy yeah uh, and even my sister, they, uh, we had our kids 10 weeks apart, uh, the eldest ones. And then her youngest and my third are three months apart. So we had lots of time to sort of say, oh, we're doing this. And there is that, it's sisters. 
Yeah. Has oh, a sister. I, yep. And so from the nap time thing, I think I talked about the last time we chatted is like comparing who's having a nap or my baby's having a nap now. My baby has three naps. Or how you get them to nap. <laughs> yeah. Or whether they or sleep do you nurse them to sleep. And how you, my, so I had a sister, I have a sister and it was the same because I think when you're so close to someone and you're doing something that you're, you're not sure you're doing it right. It's really hard when someone is not doing the same thing as you, because then right. it makes, you know, and it's so much easier to react with, oh, what are they doing? They're not doing what I do. But really, I think that comes from, oh, my God, what if I'm doing it wrong? Mm. You know, does that? Mm-hmm. That kind of makes sense now, although it came across more as she thought I, I felt like sometimes she thought I was doing it wrong, but I'm older. Well, I think she and I both, I think my sister and I, it was the same thing. And, and I mean, I, I think she, I think, I think there were iterations of both when they were young. Those feelings of I would probably think she was doing it wrong and she would probably True. think I was doing it wrong. And then, of course, as as we age, our children humble us to the point of realizing that we don't really know what we're doing and we're just kind of. Well, and now it's high school. So they're both going into grade 10 and we're both approaching school differently oh, as parents. Oh, yeah. So it's continuing you and your yeah. sister. Yeah. And so, but just, but learning too. That's interesting because, like, they really, both boys competed in CrossFit. Oh, yeah. Oh, they both did really well. That was Sunday, and I was like, should I have? They just played rugby on Saturday. We had dinner with colleagues and friends on Saturday night as a family. Yeah. We're planning a holiday with them. And then we woke up Sunday. I went to church, and they came back, and it was time for them to do the comp. And then Victoria had her recital for, for oh, dance. Oh, wow. At, this is kind of a parenting relationship thing because my husband said, is this too much? And I thought, I was questioning it too, thinking, are they okay? It kind of came out of the basement. And I was like, are they too tired? My son kind of hurt his shoulder getting tackled in rugby the week before. Should I be pushing them? And they arrived and they both did really well. So then the question is, how were they Monday morning? Fine. Because that, and to me, like, it's good to, I think parents who care question. Mm-hmm. Are we doing the right things? You know, I think that's a sign of a good parent, even if you're not doing the right things, that you're you're asking yourself those questions. If humans are, are participating in activities that fill their cup and energize oh. them, then you're not overdoing it, right? Okay. This is where I think it's so dangerous to start asking Google these questions. Yeah. How many activities? Yeah. There's too many activities. Or even talking to our friends because, you know, I've, I've boy, they're, they're, it's funny, depending on who you talk to, there's the badge of honor. Oh, we only do one thing yeah. once a week. That's yes. the badge of honor. Yeah, totally. But there's the opposite badge of honor. Oh, yeah, we're in hockey four days uh, yeah. a week, and then we have piano. Like, and, it, and, and I think maybe the sense of badge of honor comes from it works for that family. Right. You know? And they have the time, the energy. And one thing is that I was thinking that... Um, they have the time and the energy. And then as a parent, too, each parent could have a little bit different perspective on whether. Yes. And that's something that um, I didn't think of, or maybe we just didn't talk about it. Um, the last time when we were chatting is that we kind of, we were each raised differently and did different things and had a different focus on activities. This is you and your husband. Yeah, yeah. me and my husband. And so we have had a lot of discussions, especially right now, because we've been Probably the busiest we've ever been as a family. Yeah. His practice. But, I, you know, I will tell you, having been through it, that until your children are driving themselves, it amps up every year. Really? It just okay. gets I didn't more know more that. Intense. I know you don't think no. it does, but it does. Okay. It, it just gets, it gets crazier and crazier until either they can drive themselves or okay. someone else, like you have a carpool system. Or, right. But, um, and even then, like, you want to be a part of it. Yeah, so like I like to go into music. Yeah. Franklin and I would ride our yeah. bikes at this time of year, but I, I do find as they're getting older to make my attention divided equally between the three of them. Oh, so how do you manage that? Well, trying to do like that was just him. Yeah. He's the middle. I would say definitely he gets probably the shorter end of the stick. Right, the least amount. Yeah, yeah. and like we, you were saying about wanting to be involved, I want to go, you know, see him at piano it was nice to 
be there right at the end when we saw each other. And even though the ride home in the winter drive, five minutes. Yeah. The bike ride, not even together, 10 minutes, but just those little bits. It's something that you share. Mm -hmm. It's something that you share. And I, I think it is important. It's Again, I mean, we have so, so many things to manage and I'm, I'm sort of, I'm circling back a little bit, but I'm going to get to this, okay. the point I'm making now, which is you mentioned how you and your husband have such different upbringings and perspectives. Yeah. And so, so you work together and it, it reminded me of how we are so taxed because it's like, we want to spend time as a family. So yes. we need our times when we're all five yes. together. And then you're like, okay, I want to make sure I spend some time with my oldest. Sometime with my middle, yeah. sometime with my youngest. And your husband wants to do the same. And it, we, oh gosh, there's so much pressure. Yeah. Do you, I mean, does it feel like pressure to you or is this a. Lately, pressure changes the pressure points. Mm. It's since they, uh, because when they were babies and toddlers, physically they need you just to feed, clothe, take, keep, make sure they don't fall downstairs or stay out of yeah. harm. Yeah. Um, so there was, there was that point, and look presentable. You have to dress them, yeah. really, to go out. <laughs> and then now it's um, yeah. What is the pressure at this stage? Yeah, the pressure now a little bit of. I, what I find is the pressure specifically is to knowing like what to push the kids to do. Yeah. Like I was talking to my middle son about. Uh, academics because today is the recognition ceremony at school so I am thinking about it at one and um I know some parents already got an email saying that the kid's getting an award mm. that I talked to right yeah it's junior high so grade seven to twelve and so it's like did I push them that's probably not the right word did I encourage them yeah. to do really well in academics or um, should I push them harder? Yeah. And so, and then all of a sudden, I talked about it, and I thought, like, do, or, and I asked him, "Do you want to do well?" Well, exactly, because to me, I'm, I'm just formulating this. The pressure comes from a number of places because the pressure is from wanting to support them because now they care when they're. When they're babies, they, I mean, of course they care if they fall down the stairs, you know, but, but they don't, they're not thinking about that. They're not uh -huh. conscious of it. They don't care what clothes they put on. But when they're teenagers or teenagers, they care about how they're perceived by the world, but we're still having to guide them to go the right direction to be perceived the way they want to be perceived. Guide is better than push. That that's yeah, such well, a better that's, yeah. push is very negative. I think guide is a, I think guide, guide is, is a better. valuable word, but there is also the pressure from the schools. Mm -hmm. The hey, your, your your child doesn't seem to be understanding, or you know, yeah. the emails. I couldn't yes. believe all the emails I, I was getting from teachers. But then there's there's the pressure from other parents. I think that um, maybe it's funny because we all talk about you're kind of in the easier stage when you're between in the school age and before the teenagehood. But I'm not so sure you are because I think that although the children are a little easier, I feel like the demands and pressures are probably the greatest ever because hmm. the children don't have the independence to be able to self-manage. Right. Yes. You do still have to help them yeah. learn those study habits. And are yeah. they studying now with, they have a computer in the room. Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. We do have, um, my eldest just got his phone in grade nine, which is somewhat badge of honor. Wow. But it was that starting, is a badge of honor. Yeah. But it was starting to get annoying. The school was in photography class and uh, film class. They had to use the phone. And I was a little bit upset with the school because I'm like, and all schools are like this, not our school. Oh, for particular. sure. There's a presumption. Yeah. And then they had, um, um, for, for track and field, you had to sign up with a QR, QR code. And oh. neither of them had a phone at oh. that point. There was no physical sign up. And so it was becoming annoying. Yeah. Um, I think pretty that... good on them. It's, they're yeah. not sitting there. They don't bring them to the table. I do think the longer you can go, the better. Yes. And I think that isn't just a... I, I think that's proven. So it's not just, you know what we were saying about badge of honor. I think the longer we can wait with our phones, with our kids, the better, but 
it is scary how um, it does become a logistical issue. It is um, now. And then, yes, do I want to see, do you want, it? so what's, I think the pressure now is what you said is about the freedom they have, letting them have that freedom as they grow and change um, and go where they want. He likes cooking. That's why so he has, he's starting to have friends over that grow up differently and have different households yep. and everything. And they're noticing how we, you live your yeah, way. For yeah. example, eat butter. Oh, not all families have mm. butter. And then he cooked them steak. It was, he just got into cooking from YouTube. Oh, cool. And then I needed him to help in the eldest because I, my husband often isn't home for dinner since they were little. So it's just my, right. so if the other two have activities, he can now help actually make the whole dinner. And I don't, that's fantastic. I don't think he feels pressured by it. Sometimes he doesn't no. want to. He never says no. He's the eldest. I'm the eldest too. I think it's so good for him. I don't think it matters if he feels pressure. I think that's really good. Yeah. Like, I think it's good. To, he's contributing to the household. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'd love to hear about the things that kind of challenge you the most at this stage. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the first thing we talked about, we've already covered, is is trying to find that balance of what we should be doing, what our children need, you know, what's best for them versus what are other people doing. Yes. Like, you're definitely in that dance. And I don't think that dance ever goes away. Like, I, I feel it now. The crummy thing is, when they're my kid's age, you can't do anything. Like, at okay. your stage, you could be like, okay, let's amp up this, let's adjust here, let's mm-hmm. try and support them more here. But when they become adults, you just, all you can go is, it's too bad I wasn't... <laughs> better at this back then or that they didn't uh, get more of that i'm sure i'll have those moments uh, I, I, think, I can't I even think see parents do yeah i think it's natural yeah i think though that's the pressure point and then also knowing um i was mentioning before we started recording that i went up last night to an evening meeting which is very new okay for me and it's this new is volunteer for you to leave work. the house at night yes in the evening because my husband isn't typically home till seven or later so I had to have dinner ready for them after because the boys both had CrossFit. And so, and then Victoria hasn't taken the home alone course. Right. Right. And she's still, yeah. She's 10. Still and so I, she can stay at home for a bit. She has the home, we still have a home phone. That's good. And yeah. she texts me on Facebook Messenger. Perfect. She doesn't have a phone. She has her iPad. Um, so, but it's logistics. There's no one here. Right, you're both so from no town. You're from from Some Salt Spring. Salt Spring and he's, he's from, from Winnipeg. From Winnipeg, outside of Winnipeg. So that is tough. It yeah. does change things, and so it, no parents. It's harder to unless you you know it's harder to lean on people unless they're leaning back on you. Yeah. So it is. It can be hard to find a community. It, limo driver becomes mm-hmm. very intense, but also part again wanting to be a participant in their activities. And that you know I don't see them all day. I do no. miss them stuff. Right. And so this kind of leads me into um, something we had talked about before, which is we were talking about what one of the challenges is that you experience, a personal challenge, mm. not related to your kids, okay. not related to worrying about, um, you know, how your kids were being guided or, or nurtured. And you spoke of because you don't work and because you're at home, that um the the challenges around that right and that personalization i don't know the psych psych, psychological word for that would like identifying too much with what they were doing might be projecting i i think projecting might be the word yeah Yeah. and so it's so involved so back to that like comparison thing like my kids doing this i and then you almost say i'm doing this i've caught myself before saying I'm on this team. Really? Like a Freudian or whatever, like a slip. Yeah, so instead of saying he's or she's yes, on the team. Yes, he or she. Saying, well. So what happened um, that that made you catch yourself, where, where you <gasps> kind of went, oh, my God. That's only recently. Really? Yeah, I, I would say only recently in the last even, like, six months to a year. Oh, interesting. Because before I would say, like, we as a family are part of Dance, well, you were so immersed in their lives, you probably yeah. didn't have space 
to think about your own sense of self. But then, um, yeah. So was there was there an event, a moment? Or? So I found out that he didn't make the basketball team, and it had been one of his goals in a teacher's in, in the parent teacher interview. Oh, so that was part of it. And in our school, it's a bit different. If you're in that elective, down the color option. If you're if you you start out in basketball, once you don't make the team, you're kicked out of that elective. Oh, and so you have to go and choose your second choice. So it was a big deal. So it was a physical move too. Right. So I felt like I could feel it. And you're right. Maybe that was a point. It was very visceral. Like it was strange. Like it was almost like I could feel how he must be feeling. Like the rejection. Yeah, the so, rejection. So and you, were, like, you took on. Yeah, that feeling. And then I was um, took it very personally. Oh. As a personal rejection of like, that is, and that's something that, um, was his, he wasn't crying. Yeah. He wasn't crying. He wasn't upset. Um, well, he was upset, but he wasn't taking it as hard. Yeah, he's not that emotionally, like, uh, would it call him, I, that would be very odd for him to come home and say, Mom, guess what? Right. The other two, yes, the first and third, very different. Oh. But he's not, like that. you have to draw him out because he's an introvert. Oh, okay, so this was your middle child. Yeah, and so then oh. it's the hardest one to fit. So the oldest two, we could have just, or sorry, the uh, eldest and the youngest, we would have just talked about it forever. Yes. Right. The second one, very, very different, the middle child, because I had to draw that and whole lot of discussion parenting and introvert. But like, how are you feeling about this? I didn't actually ask him that though. Subsequently. And I he, if, I, if I know him, he, he probably was like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's Fine. what he did. Talk to his brother about it. Oh. So the age difference is a factor. Right. You, you know, like they walk home from school together. Right. So his older brother are you? So you, you were crushed, it sounds like. Yeah. Totally gutted, as they say. So did someone actually call you on it? Did someone say, My other uh, son. Really? Yeah, because I had to get up and go do something else that evening and help them. They're in debate as well. I'm okay, so you, them. like when you say you were crushed, you went to bed. Yeah, I, and which is that odd. That's not <laughs> okay. me. So you were, okay. Yeah, that's this not me. Deal. This is not like I, you know, as my daughter said, moms don't get sick. Like you, yeah. I power on. Like yeah. I'm not a person that yeah. just... So you, you had to retreat. I had to retreat, which is odd for, I'm an extrovert and I love yeah. people. I love to talk about it. So, so that's, what did your son say? Your eldest. My eldest was like, out. oh yeah, he, and he's very a communicator verbally. And he said like, mom, get over it. You have to move on. You can't do anything about it. So there you are. You've, you've gone to bed. Your eldest comes in and goes, um, yeah, mom. <laughs> And get so, up. So that that was a, a changing, a sort of trans, a transformational moment in a way. Yeah, I I would say that's a really I never thought about that. And then it was like their successes or failures, like it, they are tied to me. Of course, yeah, absolutely. And I do feel that never them. goes away. So learning though that like, well, learning, how to ask the questions and how to yeah. still be a support and guide your yeah. work. But not be not take it on, and also yeah. it's their thing to feel exactly right yeah. because we can't support them if we're a heap on the floor. Yeah, and uh, and um, from what I recall, you had said um, because of that, you started doing more. Like you joined? Did you join junior league? I'd already joined, but but it was becoming busier. Okay, I got to. Go away recently to New Orleans wow. with them, and uh, that was the first time I'd ever been away from kids since they were born. And, and it then, just sort of happened that yeah. they needed more volunteer work and to take it more active role. I'm like, okay, there's a need meeting. Yes, I will go. Right. So you you kind of went, all right. Let me start owning my own things. Yes. So I don't have to own my son's things and to have my own my children's successes and and failures. Yes. In a way, I think our, our children need to see us do that, so they learn to do it. That's true. Because if we're just encouraging them to do it, you know what they how they say children do as we do, not as we say. Okay, and they do. And that's what I've been thinking about that s- since we talked. Is that they do watch us? That they're watching how we are in the I world. I know. I know. Yeah. And, and now they get to see me more in the world. 
I think it's those moments where you're like, our kids need to see us go, okay, dinner's in the oven, bye. Not, I'm at your activity being a volunteer. That's different. Or like, sitting there watching yeah. you. I think, though, I did hear this perfect thing that I really like somewhere. can't recall where I heard it. Is that when you grow up and have a parent that is there watching, the, the child feels like they're seen. Absolutely. And I, I think we do need to watch them. Yeah. Um, Not just do the drop off. No, for sure. I think we need to watch them. And again, talk about adding pressure and we need to have our own things, right? They need to, we need to watch them and they need to watch us. Mm. Yeah. And that, it actually, my daughter came to, I did a Jane's walk, the Marta in the military. She came with her friend. The boys were playing rugby, but she came and I didn't speak. I was, I'm in a group. I'm usually the organizer getting stuff happening. I'm, I'm the behind, stage manager, was mm-hmm. never in theater, but the person behind, behind the scenes, the yeah. produ- production. Yeah, like organizing a meeting that, that put all the players together. Yeah. And so she at least saw me, though, like holding the mic for the person speaking, this historian. Yeah. That came. Being involved. Yeah. Being involved. And like, and then she kept trying to ask me something. And I was like, just a minute. Yeah, like I'm, the, I'm. I'm not the mom right now. I'm yeah. The clock. You, you're just here. <laughs> yeah. And they're used to seeing dad working and watching yeah, being that. Of course. Yeah. And so for me, I'm, it's different. I'm not just advocating for them at a parent meeting. Yeah. Or, yeah. You're owning your own thing that, that mm-hmm. you are contributing to your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's fantastic. So in a way, I mean, it was a bit of a, a bump that got you there. Yeah. And a wake up call. I still find it hard to learn how to, guy that especially the middle one and to learn like what oh. does he want because yeah. there's a lot of pressure on them at grade seven definitely in grade seven they all want to fit in no mm. one really it seems like they don't want to stand out or he doesn't I, he I definitely know. like he would like to just be yeah. quietly behind the scenes yeah. yeah the other day even i was saying to him is that what you want um that's who he is i think it's who he is it doesn't matter but what he wants, you know, it's kind of, he does it his way and he does not need the world to watch him be in the center of the game. Right. He just wants to do it without bringing attention to it. And be part of the team. Yeah. And, and to support the team. And I still have the side of that in a lot of books, but about quiet, that book about introverted oh. and about how to raise quiet. It's, I think that's just the title of it, but how to raise introverted kids because I think so many times they're you feel like you have to draw them out yeah particularly because you're an extrovert yes like and my husband's not not yeah so he your husband probably gets him yes the best yeah it's also woman and man like male free female so you're you're not just an extrovert extrovert but you're female you're a bit like the porcupine and the turtle the two of you at (laughs) times where you're you're like expecting him to respond a certain way and yeah. of course, your son, your firstborn, taught you. Yes. Speak, and he's the extrovert. And yeah. He's the the watch everything I do, and I need to. I need yeah. to. You need to witness all my. Yes. Actions. And then your second is the exact opposite. So then, what's number three? Is she somewhere she, in between? No, she. She's no. a typical baby. Youngest. Yes. Needs so lots of attention. But no, they are. They all want me still there yeah. to witness everything. Um, she has. She's so. It's so funny watching her though. She has her, they talk after school now on Messenger, on video call. Right. This is all new in the last couple the of months. Do. Yes. Oh. I don't even think I mentioned yet. This is our second go. Um, something uh, we did a whole podcast, very last minute. You graciously agreed to support me. And then all of a sudden, everything it was gone. I've lost stuff before, and I've always been like, no big deal, because I've got autosave. I went in, autosave, not one autosave, nothing. It was gone. You, you said there were more things you thought you might want to talk about. Yeah, I was thinking about just parenting styles. It's one thing I didn't talk about. And just when the kids were young, all the parenting courses that were available. Yeah. And I don't know if we touched on that the last time. There was, but some kids went to Brilliant Beginnings. Which oh, was a yeah, that was a new thing. I just remembered going. 
whoever came up with that name <laughs> talk about brilliant. Like, who does not want to put yes. their child in a class called Brilliant Beginners? And I didn't actually do that one. I would tend to go to Families Matter, which is a publicly Another funded. Great one. Yeah. yeah, and I did this very unique thing that might have been more popular when your kids were a little called Pact. Pact it was amazing. I talk ones. about it so much because I wish that every not everyone would have liked it. I'm not sure introverted parents would have liked it. But, but it's such a valuable... And we would break, and while the children played, the parents would go have our little parenting class. I remember that. Yeah, that and was it was amazing. amazing. So that's one thing I want to, is is finding that support as you're parenting. Recognizing that what works for some won't yes. work for you. and Because, God, I remember those early years. And, and just, I mean, I talked... As you can imagine, to so yes. many different parents about how they were doing everything they were doing. And sometimes it was pretty dizzying for me because I was malleable in that way. You know, the youngest of four, like oh, always kind of yeah, open to tight. ideas. And I'd be like, constantly, am I doing it right? Should I try this? Should I try that? You know, and you were working with kids. I was working with kids too. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of that support piece, what we learned over the years is we made family friends. Yes. And that is a game changer. Yes. When, when it's hard to find that. It's hard fa- to find that. Families. The dads yeah. have to get along. Yeah. I always told you. The other. dads have yes. to get along. That's women, the clincher. Women make it work. Well, I mean this in the nicest way. I think women will put up with a lot <laughs> from each other if they know their kids are being entertained and it gives yeah. them that mental break. Till they're that, certain age. support. So of course. Yeah. Okay. And then, but even on a team, there's a whole bunch of families that are sitting in the lodge or the, the pool or, or wherever you are. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's super valuable to, to bring up, like finding support. those support groups. If, and, yeah. um That was key, I think, to having kids. Okay. So is there, are there more things you, you had thought you might want to talk about today? I think just being physically, this is a physical and mental, but just talking about the physical health of being a parent. But as the kids have gotten um, older, and especially having had my third at 37, right. staying in shape and, and being um, physically fit and all the hormones that we yeah. talked about last time, perimenopause and all that, is all coming into play. But um, Well, yeah, because all of that affects your ability to be your best version of self mm. when you're exhausted Mm -hmm. you're having to throw meals together because everyone's got an activity it's hard to eat healthy like and I mean for sure I sometimes I wish there was a word that that brought physical and mental health into one thing because I am talking about all the same thing making sure you have that balance yeah and making sure you prioritize it and recognize how important it is because you can't be the guy that and the strong I'm more likely to be a puddle on the floor when I'm haven't been taking as good care of myself. Well, and they suddenly, just before I was putting this sort of mental capacity, I still read with my youngest. But suddenly when I was trying to go upstairs, my middle son needed, suddenly started talking to me. Oh. Which was, he just, not about anything deep. It just right. wanted to tell me, I can't even recall, something about school. Right. And I was like, oh, I better like, focus in. But I was also tired. Mm-hmm. And um, so just ha- Learning how to have, I'm learning about exercise as an agent and what is the best form of exercise. Yeah. And for me, it's social. Um, to, to get that, all those things that you need yes. and, and for the kids to see you. When you can do it socially, then you get the trifecta because you get the exercise, which you need. And yeah. you get the socializing, which you need. But then usually the way you get to socialize and the way women talk, you get mental health support. Yes, all those needs into one. Uh, it is neat to have something in common. I do CrossFit too, and the boys do it. So I, I don't do it to their same level. They're very disappointed that I have not developed at the same level they have. So like, you should be lifting more now, Mom, because Olympic lifting is part of it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. But just to do it at the same time. That sounds amazing. Yeah. To have, to have that shared experience. And hopefully I'll have something with, with my daughter. It's much more of facilitating all her things right now. 
I know, right? Like trying to. Oh. Although she wants to go for Starbucks, she loves to walk to Starbucks and go out for that and do stuff like that. But hopefully, we'll find something physical to do together. So, Rita, already you have heard the motive of your song. So you know that we're doing this a little bit backwards. But just for the sake of uh, the listener, I'm going to play the little motive of your song for you. This is Mm. the song I, I wrote the day we did our first attempt at an interview. So, oh, oh, thank you. So this is a little, so obviously I've gone and I've written the whole song since. And um, I came back to you and I kind of explained it to you, like how that's the Rita theme, but the Rita theme and, and, and your piece evolves in a way that there's addition of new members of the Rita theme. Your, your husband is the next part. He comes along. I think he's the violin. And then your firstborn comes in. But each time it returns back to you. And for me, the big piece was around that, you know, that moment you shared when you were so, you know, caught yourself going, oh, my God, I've suddenly become too immersed in what my children, my children's wins and losses. And I need to find myself again. And just how I guess in a way it's like the the general theme, the human condition is that no matter who we're surrounded by and no matter who's in our lives, it always comes back to just us. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's me. And I mean, that, that is the other pieces I'm meaning now that I'm getting older. The women older than me are teaching me so much. Mm-hmm. And yes. Which I wasn't ready for. No. When the kids were young. It's hard to hear when we're young again because we're, we're just not that confident yet. Mm. And there's, I think there's something developmentally, like I, I have this theory that, okay, so... When we're really little, we're friends with girls and we don't even think about it. But then when we hit puberty and boys come into the mix, things start to shift. And I honestly believe that women become quite competitive, even even though they're still friends. I think there's a lot of competitiveness mm-hmm. through the 20s and 30s. Okay. Comparison, you know, and into the 30s, as depending on when we have our children, we start to recognize a bit of camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, through the 40s, it gets stronger. And then there's something about 50s where I just suddenly think we realize what a resource other women are. And we're maybe we just don't give, we don't care about men that much anymore. <laughs> like, even if we're in the dating game, like, we just, men are no longer the priority. Like, it hmm. seems weird to think it took that long. Yeah. They, well, that, I'm suddenly like, were these women here the whole time, like, when I started working? I like this vision that you're giving me, this image that, that we're, they were always there. Yeah, and we didn't see them, and then we start seeing them more as we go, and then we become them. There's some liberation that happens, and um, you stop perceiving other women, I think, as a threat because you're not competing anymore. Like you, mm-hmm. you it's just maybe a level of self acceptance. Yeah, and more open to. I think more open to advice. Yeah, well, yeah, totally. Because I think it all comes down to confidence. I think the more insecure we are. Unless we're seeking advice from someone, if someone brings us advice, that can just trigger our own feeling of insecurity. Mm. Like, yeah, and now I'm willing to be uh, more of a student, and maybe that's the advantage of being at home for four. I told you my last I've been at home for fourteen years. I've always think of a thought of parenting as an actual job. Right. Well, it is. Yeah. Like, and it was my the, job. Yeah. That was yeah. my full time job. It still is. It still is. But less, a little less so now yeah. that they're fully in school. We have more flex up. hours now, but you're still, you know, you, like, this is the thing. And, and I experienced this in some really challenging ways because if your child's going through something, even if they're 15, 16, 17, 18, you need to d- drop everything and be there for them. Yeah. And it's not something that a career person, particularly your husband, say he may not always be able to do that. So you I can't kinda, imagine. Oh, he you have to be at the ready, and right. so that's the I'm weird thing. That. It's almost like we're a pit crew, 
you know, the pit crew doesn't know when the race car is going to need them. It's doing its laps. And then all of a sudden <laughs> the car pulls over and you got to be like as fast and as effective as you can so they can get back in the race. It's kind of like that. Yes. I got it. the first email home. Actually, my eldest son was misbehaving in class. Oh, no. He's never done that. So I think some I know, social right. things are going on. Yeah, that's usually a sign of some kind of stress or discomfort. Well, we were pretty be. upset because we yeah. were, were not used to ever having, I have to say, like, never had a call home about behavior. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. If that had been my child and I heard that story, yeah. I'm going to segue. Um, yeah. So I, I, um, I'm I, going to say goodbye soon. And I just yes. want to tell you, there's, there's such beauty in your approach and you... You, you have this flow about you and you move through things from, and, and you, you, you take the cues and you respond to them. And uh, it, it, it reminds me, I'm, as I'm sitting here with you now and about to say goodbye, it's making me smile because I'm thinking how much I've enjoyed this last couple of hours, as well as the first one, and how much have I, I've enjoyed watching you as a mother and mm-hmm. how just your interactions with your children and, and it's just so clear you are serving them so beautifully mm. and that if you are you know you use the word right but if you aren't if you are off the mark you are the kind of person that figures it out and then resets <laughs> maybe that's what that song is about too it's there's a reset each you know you get these oh now it's back to just the Rita theme again and now like yeah. and each phase of their life yeah you kind of need to reset you do too, and right? your life and your husband's that's a lot of resets that's a lot of resets yeah. wonderful well mm-hmm. thank you so much it's great thank to you Margaret. so there you have it uh rita's podcast um it's all a week late you may have noticed um n- yeah there's just something um that has been cursed about uh, my interactions and experiences with Rita's podcast because I was um, finishing up this farewell outro when last Sunday, when my cat jumped up on the computer while I was literally recording my voice. And when I pulled him out of the way, I spilled a mug of tea on my keyboard. What was a mug of tea doing so close to my laptop? Oh my God, I've been doing it for years and uh, it never occurred to me that was a bad idea. Uh, Anyway, so here it is a week late and Rita's song Foundations is going to play us out. Foundations, man, that lady's got foundations. I mean, you can just feel it. She is just such a solid foundation for her family, but she couldn't be if she didn't have her own foundation to begin with, so... Here is Foundations to play us out. Feel free to reach out if you want to come on the podcast. It's just so fun. We just sit and chat about our lives and I'll write you a song. Here it is, Foundations. <laughs>